Hello and welcome to this medium length video in our series on constructive development theory. This video is about leadership but with a CDT bent. My name is Dr Darren Stevens, and I will be explaining how, once we understand that people operate at different levels of self-awareness and cognitive complexity, how this radically changes our understanding of leadership. If you have seen any of our other videos you will know this already. There is a lot of text in this slideshow so please feel free to pause the video and read it should you wish to or simply just listen. And to simply put it, vertical development is not about what we know, it's about how we think, how we make meaning as we look at the world around us. Growing vertically means gaining the ability to think in a more complex, strategic and interdependent way. From a CDT perspective, this growth is distinguishable and measurable. And given that we cannot predict the future, what makes us think that we can lead effectively? Please don't read all of this, unless you really want to. The point about this slide is that this is typically the content of an HRM module on leadership, and we then spend the next two hours talking about each one and then comparing them to each other. The students are then asked which one they find in their businesses. What I prefer to ask them is, how does your leader think? And we go from there. The inevitable outcome of teaching leadership and expecting the students to write down their thoughts is this image. They can never explain the miracle of leadership as they don't know its constituent parts. Transformation requires complexity. CDT can and will show you these constituent parts in this video. And universities throw models in like this one as though they are explanations of great leadership without realising that they are st still simply descriptions of a leader. What they do not ask is, similar to the ideas within our videos on psychometrics, can a leader choose not to do these things? So again, it's not about having a vision, it's about how does the leader think about long term. The next travesty we see in universities is a misappropriation of authority. Daniel Goldman was a journalist, not a psychologist, yet we take on face value and even teach the ideas in this grid. Where is the doctoral research that supports this position? EQ is not a psychometrically valid concept, it is simply the agreeableness trait, which suggests people are compassionate and polite, but also a pushover. Where is the data supporting this perspective? Are students being taught the right thing? Go back to the nonsense from the last slide and the emotional point is blatantly limited. So the ideas behind leadership that are unsubstantiated, such as Goldman's proclivities, lead to ridiculous perspectives we see a lot of on LinkedIn, like the one here. Servant leader is possibly one of the worst ideas to emerge from a leadership thought since dictatorship. Whoever thought of this, had absolutely no idea about stages of complex thinking and just how important they are in leadership. Please pause the video here and have a brief look at the explanations against the alleged traits of a servant leader and then understand why someone capable of choosing how they are in the moment would choose not to do this. There is always a better way. Far too much emphasis on the emotions without a thought to the longer term ramifications which are on the next slide. When it comes to the intersection of change and leadership, the opportunity and the problem boil down to complexity. As a leader rises in the ranks, her responsibilities and the complexity of her role rise together. In this image, the red bars represent what the leader brings to the table to meet the demands of each career level. Green represents the level of complexity at each level. If the leader's ability to handle complexity cannot keep pace with their role, they will not meet the organisation's leadership expectations. Well, this is a better diagram. 80% of the leaders in IBM's Global CEO study series named complexity as the single biggest issue they face in their business. Then why are we not teaching complexity at university? Henley Business School reported in a recent study that $237 billion, or 10% of EBIT, in profits are lost annually by the top 200 global companies due to complexity. Why? Because as we grow in our leadership roles, success becomes less about our technical expertise or adding skills to our toolkit, and more about expanding our container for complexity. Yet we're still teaching leadership as a skill. If leaders are going to keep pace with the complexity of their roles, they have to upgrade their operating system, obviously using CDT. So Patrick Force says, Forth says, says that leaders tend to make decisions based on experience, but experience is no longer a reliable guide when challenges are new, unpredictable, and filled with unknown unknowns. 
As a result, organizations need to rethink the way leaders are developed. And to paraphrase Nick Petrie at the Center for Creative Leadership, most leaders already know what they should be doing. What they lack is the cognitive complexity to do so. What I am talking about is not new information. We have known it for years. This image is Elliot Jacques' ideas on his span of discretion. Why hasn't this permeated the module content of academia? Perhaps it lacks a certain constructive perspective that means it is not as accessible as it could be to undergrad students. And if the concept is difficult, how do we simplify it so it is relatable? Luckily, constructive development theory knows precisely how to do this using cognitive intentions and self-awareness. The shift toward understanding development as a constantly evolving continuum rather than a series of static signposts is essential to conceptualising vertical development. When we use the framework of building consciousness rather than building skills, we begin to understand how vertical development applies to organisational leadership and how the field of psychology is woven into its history. From a developmental level perspective, the variety of leadership theories we teach at university will or will not be used by those leaders at the different levels. When I teach about leadership, I emphasise that yes, there might be some useful theoretical models out there already, but none really takes into account the levels of vertical development in the way we see it on this slide. I then explain that a leader at AQ9 is capable of choosing not to do something, whereas a leader at AQ5, usually a self-made business, is not capable of choosing not to do something. We then discuss the ramifications of these perspectives on the business and employee outcomes. Do you think leaders have leader-esque personalities? Please see our other video on this as a personality is a limitation. A dynamically intelligent leader's level of awareness and choice is more systems, uh, a more systems way of thinking about their self. This allows them to construct their thinking style from a position of choice to suit the context, which means that a high-level leader is high-level in multiple businesses. No need for specific thinking when complexity is transferable. CDT is the link between domain general and domain specific thinking, as demonstrated in my research. So what is the point of understanding leadership from a CDT perspective? It is knowing that how the leader constructs their thinking is measurable, malleable and mindful. I added that last one for alliteration purposes. It sounds good, but is ultimately meaningless, much like the majority of content on leadership we see online. How a leader constructs meaning and their capacity to lead can be seen on this slide. Pause the video. For your information, this is derived from the profiles of over 200 leaders in industry using the Identity Compass Profile tool. Leaders do not have to be the expert in their field. What they have to be better at than the people around them is joining the dots. Long-term thinking, abstract thinking, relationship building, big picture thinking, and it's all measurable using the Identity Compass. In a recent talk at my university, the speaker asked the audience, what does a great leader look like? The audience spent 10 minutes explaining their perspective, which ultimately mapped to each of the facets mentioned here on this slide. Obviously, CDT could have answered this question with this single slide. The one thing missing from the audience was an understanding of complexity's role in leadership and the ideas that we saw on slide 13. So to go back to the beginning, leadership is a catch-all for business jargon that seldom has researched to support its position. What I would rather see in every lecture, in every professional training program, is how complexity is the single biggest intervention in leadership efficacy. And then we can build vertically from there. The existing ideas and paradigms are not sufficient to study complexity-based leadership. With its emergent processes and adaptive outcomes, we need longitudinal studies and qualitative descriptions of relevant processes and relationships. CDT offers this, and I'm happy to say that we have a number of PhD candidates right now using CDT as the basis for their research into leadership and complexity. So keep watching this space. If you would like to discuss how the IAD uses CDT to improve the thinking of leaders using the Identity Compass and our Three Leaders program, do get in touch today. Thank you for listening and take care.